Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do, I'm going to be talking about brands that I almost wrote off. Brands that I'm glad I gave a second chance to. Brands I almost boycotted. Okay, I haven't figured out the exact title of what this video is going to be, but hopefully you understood somewhat of what I'm going to be talking about in today's video from those suggestions. But a couple weeks ago, I did a video talking about makeup products that I was glad I didn't declutter or makeup products that I was glad I gave a second chance to. And that gave me the idea to do kind of a spin-off of that one and talk more about brands in general that I almost completely wrote off, that I thought were frauds, that I was like, I'm not buying anything from this brand again because I don't like them. But I'm really glad that I gave them a second chance or a third chance or I think in some cases like a fourth and a fifth chance And now I actually really like all five of these brands and I'm really glad that I decided not to boycott them Okay, okay, so I hope that you will find this video fun I will link the one with the specific products uh, in my up in my cards here if you want to check that one out I did also want to say that I filmed this look I just finished filming with the new ColourPop Cosmetics Sunflower collection that video should already be live and this is one of the two looks that that I show in that video so I will also link that one if you want to check out how I got this look because I really like it but if you want to hear about the brands that I almost boycotted I almost said no to I almost wrote off let's go ahead and get started all right so one of the first brands that I wanted to talk about I actually had two products that I mentioned from them in my products that I almost decluttered video and that is hourglass cosmetics hourglass was one of those brands that always seemed just like real fancy to me like the fancy people used hourglass cosmetics and I was like no 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 I'm not fancy so that is not going to be a brand for me I just feel like something with their packaging and even I don't know like the logo their branding it just screams fancy and I can only pretend to be fancy that's all I got and so they were also fancy means you know more expensive and I was like you know it just doesn't seem like a good match but then more people would talk about them and then more people would talk about them. And I was like, okay, maybe I should just give them a try. And one of, I think it was the very first product that I purchased from Hourglass was one of their ambient lighting blushes. And I was so excited about it and it came and it was in like the gorgeous packaging and I was like, oh yeah, like this is gonna be great. And I remember putting it on and being like, well, I still look like me so I'm not really sure what happened here like I thought like I was gonna have like a maybe like a full body transformation when I put the blush on and that didn't really happen first of all the blush was not the right shade for me and this is something that I used to do a lot back in the day I would buy specific shades because I heard someone that I liked on YouTube talk about a shade even if that person didn't look like me had the same skin tone as me um, I would do that not only for like cheek products. I did it for foundation shades. Okay Let me just roast myself for a minute here Like I can remember one time Jaclyn Hill talking about a specific a specific foundation She mentioned her shade and I was like, I'm gonna go find that exact same one I'm gonna go find it and I literally bought that foundation in Jaclyn Hill shade not my shade Didn't even try to color my didn't even consider that just went and bought that one shade so first of all, the shade was way too light on me. It kind of just looked, and to me it looked a little bit like chalky on my skin. I was like, oh no, what have I done? Like, what, what have I done? And I really didn't enjoy it. But then I would try them again. I got a little mini of one of their finishing powders and I was like, yes, this is gonna be the one that gives me that full body transformation. And I think I just didn't really understand how to use them. I mean, I'm not a makeup artist, never have been, never tried to become one. And there are certain things with makeup that I didn't really understand what their uses were supposed to be for and I think the hourglass finishing powders were one of those that I was confused about and I would feel bad but I would talk about hourglass products in not a very kind way because I was like I feel like these are expensive and I just don't really get what the hype is about I'm sure I've mentioned them in makeup that I don't see the hype about makeup everyone loves but I don't like like th those types of videos I'm sure I mentioned them in there but I have been coming around and it's been kind of recently. It's been, I, I want to say within this past, I, I'm like a totally different person in 2020. I will say that I'm gardening, I'm eating vegetables, I'm cooking, I'm baking. I'm doing all of these like weird things in 2020. And also I've really come to like hourglass products. Just add it to the list of things that quarantine has changed for me, I guess. I don't I don't know what else it could be. 
but I really am starting to come around the the ambient lighting bronzers I thought were really pretty the blushes that I have in a face palette from them are much more better suited on my skin tone and I think that they're really nice and I'm actually figuring out the finishing powders because there's been some great people on YouTube that have really taken the time to explain what they are and how to use them and the best tools to use them with and I'm like oh okay it's starting to make sense now I'm starting to get it I actually have a couple different products on from hourglass today I have their vanish concealer I'm a really uh, I'm a big fan of that concealer actually that's another one too when I first tried it I was like don't think I'm really gonna like it and then I figured out that you just really need to use the smallest amount of it and now I'm a much bigger fan of it and I also have on their new mascara the it's right next to me the unlocked instant extensions mascara wow wow this is a nice one their caution mascara another great one hourglass has some good products in there and I'm really glad that I didn't give up on them because now I tend to get excited when I see their new releases a brand that some of you might be surprised that I thought were frauds when I first started trying them out was ColourPop ColourPop Cosmetics. I wasn't a huge fan. I wasn't a huge fan of ColourPop when they were first coming out. All of a sudden, everybody was talking about them, right? Even people that I knew in real life who really didn't talk about like YouTube brands or Instagram brands. Like I had friends being like, hey, have you heard of that ColourPop brand? They have eyeshadows for $5. And I was like, yeah, like everyone is talking about them. <laughs> the Super Shock shadows were definitely so, so hyped with ColourPop. And it was a brand that kind of came in like a wrecking ball. Like, guess because they were super affordable they had this fun catchy unique packaging that we hadn't really seen and I'm sure all of you can remember these gigantic super shock eyeshadow videos that would go up showing full collections and just shadow after shadow after shadow after shadow and people were freaking out about this brand and one of the first products that I purchased from ColourPop was some super shock shadows again it was off of Jaclyn Hill's recommendations I wrote down a bunch of eyeshadows that she mentioned and I think I bought all of them they were five dollars each but you know when you buy 5 10 15 super shock shadows at a time it does kind of get to be a little bit expensive and when I got them I was like okay let's see how they work and I would put them on and be like all right I'm not really sure here but in one of my shadows I can't remember the name of it now but it was a dark green which I know like super weird right it was this very very dark green and I can remember getting ready for a Super Bowl and this would have been like I don't know four years ago maybe getting ready for a Super Bowl and I was like like a Super Bowl party back in the day and I was putting my brush into the super shock and I hit the bottom of it I hit pan and I was like what I'm going through this eyeshadow already like I was like that's why these are only five dollars there's no product in them this brand is a fraud i was mad i was actually really mad and i was like everybody is being scammed i'm being scammed this brand is going nowhere i just know it and there are a few videos that i have talking about ColourPop on my channel where i'm not very pleased with them i don't give very good reviews and i say in there like yes it might be great that they're affordable up front but either the quality isn't there or you're going to be going through products so quickly you know it might not always make the most sense value wise for them but I kept trying and I kept trying ColourPop because they I mean seriously they they took off everybody was falling in love with them then they started to come out with more products and I was like okay I'll keep trying I will say though that I did really like their super shock blushes for whatever reason the very first product that I purchased from ColourPop was a super shock blush it was actually two of them quarters and between the sheets I believe it was and I did really like those and I thought that they were nice blushes another thing that I learned though early on with ColourPop is that with the super shocks you really had to make sure to close them tightly because there was a couple times where I just would screw the cap back on and then I would go into one of my super shock shadows and it would be completely dried out and I'm like this is a freaking waste like my eyeshadow palettes don't do this that's another reason why I was getting so mad but I kept trying and I kept trying and you guys might know that now ColourPop is one of my favorite brands again I have a lot of ColourPop on my eyes and on my lips today I have gone on to purchase so much from the brand they've done some really cool collaborations with some of my favorite youtubers with some of my friends even and it's been so exciting to see and while I'm very upfront in saying like there are certain things from ColourPop that I simply don't like a lot of their lip products not a favorite of mine sometimes some of their complexion products not a favorite of mine I mentioned the was it the pretty fresh foundation no the no filter foundation that I mentioned in my declutter video and I said that I kind of went in not expecting to love it because I didn't always love ColourPop uh, complexion products but they do have some other products that I just think are such standouts and their eyeshadow palettes they're pressed 
palettes are one of the like top top dogs for me when it comes to eyeshadow palettes i'm constantly recommending them i'm purchasing them so much i have so many palettes from ColourPop. i do get some pr from them now which has been super exciting but it's really funny to look back and reflect and be like i genuinely was like this brand's going nowhere <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not a fan of this brand and I don't know why everybody else is and now I'm like I love Colourpop So just goes to show, you know, if you just keep trying you might end up changing your mind because that's a big one that I've changed my mind on. <laughs> I also wanted to mention a skincare brand in here and that is Tatcha. Now when I first started trying Tatcha I was actually sent a set from a friend of mine and it had in there the water cream, it had the rice powder and there was another product in there I can't remember what it is now but I started trying it out because again Tatcha I feel like was a very well known brand the fancy people were wearing the Tatcha and talking about their Tatcha skincare but it was super expensive and I was like I'm not buying that okay. Okay. So my friend who happened to love Tatcha sent me this gift set. It was around holiday time and I was like, oh my gosh, I have fancy friends. This is so cool. And one of the first items that I pulled out to try was the water cream because I'd been hearing great things about it. Now, when I was trying the water cream, I had dry, 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 dry skin, real dry. And I would need really thick, hydrating, moisturizing moisturizers to wear to combat my dry skin. The water cream from Tatcha is a very lightweight, like gel moisturizer I would say. It's not gonna do much for dry skin. <laughs> It's just not. But this was before I won my award for skincare influencer of the year that I take very seriously. Thank you so much. And I didn't quite fully understand all of that. And I was like, why? Like I'm using it, but it's like nothing's happened. Like literally it felt like my skin was just like <laughs> soaking it right up. And I was like, why am I having to use so much? What's going on? Now that I look back, this video might be a roast of me. I don't, re I don't really know how this one's gonna go, but uh, I understand why it didn't work out for me. It was, it was just not a good choice. But because so many people love that water cream and I tried it, I was like, this is dumb. I was like, I'm not spending money on Tatcha. I'm like, I boycotted this brand. I don't want anything to do with them. I don't think that they're good, good skincare products. And it wasn't until once again, 2020, that I actually started to purchase some of their products because I've had several friends talk about them and recommend them. And I remember one time having a conversation with my friend Britt Clark and she was like, girl, these are the ones that you have to try. And I was like... <laughs> So I bought some products from Sephora. I love that Tatcha has a bunch of minis, so I didn't feel super bad spending a ton of money on some of their products to try them out in case I didn't like them. But I'm like, oh, oh yes. The dewy skin cream is gonna be so much better if you have dry skin. Because even though my skin is not as dry as it was four or five years ago, it still leans on the dry side. And that one is so nice to really bring so much moisture back to my face. If you have more oily skin, the water cream will probably work great for you. Honestly, the water cream would probably work for me fine right now, but I still love the dewy skin cream because it's just, it feels so hydrating and moisturizing and I love that. Their rice polish, I have the one in deep. That has done wonders for me and clearing up, like really cleaning out my pores and really helping with hormonal acne on my chin. Even their deep cleanse, I've been a fan of that also, but even their primer. I know everyone lost their minds over the silk canvas primer, the one that came in like the little circular jar. I don't have have that one but they actually did send me the liquid form of that it's actually the primer that i use today it's a fantastic primer and i was like okay and now i feel bad because they were again they were a brand that i pretty much had completely wrote off i was like don't need anything to do with them <laughs> they're over for me and now i really enjoy their skincare products and yeah i'm a fan <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish off talking about two of my girlfriends. Okay, I like to make some jokes that I am friends with some very well-known players in the beauty industry. It is a joke though, we're not actually friends, but I do want to end the video talking about them, one of them being Charlotte Tilbury. Oh yes, Charlotte Tilbury was a brand that I thought, once again, it was like for the fancy people. Like I, I, I would see people talking about the brand and showing just like this luxurious packaging. And I was like, that, that will never be a brand for, like I will never have that type of vibe, right? That's like truly what I thought. I was like, I, that's just, we're not, we're not a mesh, you know? But I would keep hearing people talk about the brand. I keep hearing people talk about the brand and especially they would talk about the lip products. And at this time, which was several years ago, I kept hearing about KKW lipstick, the Kim Kardashian lipstick. Once again, 
just to roast myself I should have known that that shade wouldn't have worked for me I shouldn't have bought that shade just because other people that once again didn't <laughs> like maybe that lip product isn't going to suit my skin tone it's taken me a bit over the years to learn what is best for me and what my preferences are and to just be a little bit more confident in myself I guess I would say but when I kept hearing people talk about it I was like that's the one I'm gonna go for and it's funny because the other one that I would hear talked about was pillow talk though I felt like I heard in in regards to lipstick shades kkw being talked about more pillow talk was just kind of like charlotte tilbury in general but it's funny that looking back i chose kkw because it is so light and i always liked pink lipsticks and i was like why it, it could have been totally different if i had grabbed the pillow talk first because when i got kkw i was like this is going to be so great and i put it on it was way too light for me it's also in the kissing formula which i've realized i'm just not as big of a fan of because i prefer more matte lipsticks very victoria was one of the next lipstick shades that I eventually purchased and that is in the matte revolution formula and it's one of my absolute favorites I think it's gorgeous but I'm putting on this like almost like white lipstick on me and it just looks terrible and I'm devastated because it was $34 for a lipstick and I was like well, I'm never doing that again. That was a terrible idea. And I really thought that I was gonna write off the Charlotte Tilbury brand. The next product that I decided to purchase because so many people would talk about it and hype it up was her Flawless Finish Airbrush Powder. Now that's actually what I mentioned in my declutter video. So again, I'll link that in the cards because I don't wanna retell that whole story because I told it in that video. But basically I bought it because everyone was hyping it up. I bought it at a time where I didn't really use face powder. So Again, not the smartest purchase for me and I hit pan on it really quickly and for such an expensive product I was like oh no oh no my drugstore ones are gonna be much better the first several times that I reviewed that powder I really didn't have anything nice to say and I was like it's just over for me with this brand we're never gonna get along we're never gonna be a thing and that's just gonna have to be okay and now it's one of my favorite brands. I love so many products. Again, the Matte Revolution lipstick, the lip liners from Charlotte Tilbury are some of my all-time favorite lip liners. The cheek products, even products that I don't really tend to go for, the contour wand, the highlight wand, I think that those are so fantastic. And I just look back and think, if I'd actually really boycotted the Charlotte Tilbury brand, we just wouldn't be the good friends that we are today. <laughs> okay, that's another joke, but like seriously love that brand now all right and then the uh, final brand that i'm going to finish off with is another close personal friend of mine but that is natasha denona now i mentioned in the declutter video i was talking about the mini sunset palette how when i got it i wasn't really that blown away but i decided to keep it around and you know now i'm glad that i did but another palette that i tried next after the mini sunset was the mini lila palette and with natasha denona i remember when i first started hearing about the brand and seeing people use her eyeshadow palettes and they were like, oh, and I'm going to go into my Natasha Denona. And this is $129. I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Like we were already talking about Hourglass being fancy and then we had Charlotte Tilbury being bougie. I was like, what are you talking about? Over $100 for eyeshadow palettes. And she even has what, like one or two that are over $200. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't understand this. So when I got the mini sunset and I didn't immediately fall in love and be like, okay, I understand why her larger palettes are so expensive. I was really confused. But then I got the Lilo palette and unfortunately I ended up having a reaction on my eyes to it. I have pretty sensitive eyes and that just is what it is it's it's almost like been getting worse over the years which is not any fun but something about that eyeshadow palette just irritated my eyes so badly I ended up returning it I was like I can't wear this palette I don't know what's wrong with me and I was like well I'm never trying that brand again I'm not gonna try her eyeshadow palettes anymore I, I just don't think I'm gonna get on with them I think they're way too expensive I don't see anything special about them like this is it for me and the brand. This is where we part ways. And uh, here we are. And now I am such a fan of those mini palettes. Again, I think I just, I found the ones that really, really work for me because I have a lot of them now and not all of them are my absolute favorite. In my 2020 ranking eyeshadow palette video, I mentioned that the mini retro, not like, not really high up on my list, but the mini nude, I've hit pan in one of the shades. The mini glam, I wear it all of the time. I love how small they are. I just, those palettes are so great. But also the 
love palette from natasha denona is one of my favorite palettes in my collection it's a midi size so it's 65 dollars. that's still expensive don't get me wrong that's still an expensive eyeshadow palette but i deeply love that one i love so many of the shades i created my own mini love palette i have that video that i can link up in my cards too and it's because of my deep love for the love palette and i've gone on to really like a lot more from natasha from natasha denona as well the super glow highlight i think was the first product that made me be like oh okay this is nice and i love that highlighter even most recently i bought a lip gloss and i was like okay even the lip gloss is really nice she does have some really fantastic releases but not only that i really enjoy following natasha denona instagram account because she does so many tutorials when she releases a new eyeshadow palette she is putting up look after look after look and i really enjoy when brands do that because sometimes i get a little bit stuck and so when i can have so many visuals coming at me it is so helpful i'm a huge fan of the brand now and and I'm so glad that I decided to give Natasha multiple chances and yeah now I'm a fan so that is it though those are the five brands that I'm glad I gave a second chance to the five brands that I almost boycotted but I'm glad that I didn't again I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be naming this one but I hope that you like this video I hope that you found it fun again I'll link that product declutter video if you want to see some of the specific products and my reasonings behind why I'm glad that I didn't declutter them even though that they were on my chopping block again I hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts in the comments are there any brands that you had pretty much written off but now maybe as one of your favorites I would love to if you have any of those other than that though make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i hope that you will consider subscribing before you go and i will see you in my next video bye